Welcome to our latest Live from the State Capitol webinar on innovation. I'm Steve Wilson, Director of Communications for the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. With us today is Tyler Seville, Associate Director of Policy and Research, to tell you what NJBIA is doing to re-energize the innovation ecosystem and give you the latest on the upcoming five-year anniversary of the Innovation New Jersey Coalition. A few housekeeping matters before we get started. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be automatically emailed to you along with the presentation in the next day or so. You can download the pre presentation now if you prefer. Just click on the handout tab on your screen. If you have any questions during the presentation, please quick, click on the questions tab and send them to us. Tyler will be taking questions after he completes his presentation, but don't wait till then to send us your question. Just You can write them down and send them in as they come to you. So now let's get started. I would like to turn things over to Tyler Seville. Thank you, Steve, and good morning, everyone. Before I jump into our innovation update, I want to give a quick background on Innovation New Jersey. Founded in 2010, Innovation New Jersey, often known as Innovation NJ, was started by the Healthcare Institute of New Jersey and NJBIA, where I also work as our, in education and workforce development. We are a growing and diverse coalition of businesses, higher education institutions, and government established to strengthen and enhance the culture of innovation in New Jersey. And we do this by promoting public policies that encourage innovation, fostering greater dialogue among our members, and increasing collaboration between New Jersey's business and higher education communities. Our membership is free to join, and we have quarterly meetings around the state hosted by our coalition members. <clears throat> In fact, our last couple of meetings were held by Princeton University and Rowan University at their respective campuses. And our upcoming October 1st event, which I will be speaking about more later on, will count as our last meeting for 2015. So for today, I will discuss the history of New Jersey as the innovation state, the development of the New Jersey innovation ecosystem, and how New Jersey is reclaiming the innovation title. Now, you're probably wondering, what's this innovation word he keeps bringing up? You probably started hearing it a lot in the news and in conversations in sentences like, this idea is so innovative, or innovation is going to be the key to our success. It's certainly been the buzzword for this year. However, to put it simply, in business terms, it is the process of transforming an idea or invention and bringing it to market either as a good or service. I'm sure you can think of tons of examples of things that were once inventions that are now commercially available. But it's not just the products that we use today, but the successive improvements of these products before they reach the consumer, as well as the improved processes and manufacturing technologies that make these products that are also innovative. When we talk about an innovation ecosystem, imagine it is all the players that help this process bring to life. Imagine all of the individuals that have the ideas that bring objects and products to market, ranging from the startup company and angel investor to the testing facility and the advanced manufacturer. Now, the reason why I say this is because here at Innovation NJ and at NJBIA, we firmly believe New Jersey is the innovation state. We have a rich history of innovators, both individuals as well as corporations, going back as far as the early 1800s. We have been home to innovation giants like Thomas Edison, the Johnson & Johnson brothers, Bell Labs, RCA, as well as others who did not just pioneer industries, but literally created industries that we've had for the past century. New Jersey was a leader in telecommunications, the life sciences, food processing, and petrochemicals. And for the most part, we still are today. But something happened along the way. New Jersey lost its edge over the world and rested on its laurels of the previous century. Emerging global markets offered companies greater choices 
to where uh, greater choices on where to invest and find talent. And many larger legacy companies cut back and or outsource their basic research, which often came with intimate knowledge of the industries. Combining these issues along with the high cost of doing business in New Jersey placed the innovation state at a considerable competitive disadvantage. Additionally, states like Massachusetts and cities like San Diego embrace their colleges and universities as engines of economic growth. They recognize that the trend that collaboration between academia and industry could advance their economies and collaboration between academic institutions could further leverage resources to attract industry partnerships and build their state's innovation ecosystem. Especially as innovator companies outsource an increasing level of their research and sought to work with the leading experts in their field, states that are using their economic resources as economic development tools have gained a advantage in attracting industry investments by being able to meet the varying R&D needs of mature and emerging research-based companies. And so it was for this reason why Innovation New Jersey was formed, to encourage New Jersey to support its innovation ecosystem by increasing the collaboration between business and higher education communities to spur innovation. However, after partnering with the New Jersey Policy Research Organization, NJ Pro for short, to better understand how academia and business and government can partner, we found that there were several barriers. The first of these was the culture clash between academia and industry. Too often, there were two types of philosophies when it came to research. Science for the sake of science and science for profit. While both have their merits, individuals often overlook the value products can make when brought to market, especially things like vaccines and drugs that improve the health and well-being of individuals. The second issue was the need to alleviate administrative burdens associated when partnering with an academic institution. It is often common for both companies and institutions to be concerned about their intellectual property and streamlining the, contra the contract process. While it's hard to avoid some of these issues, many research universities around the country have generic or master contract agreements to kickstart negotiations. The third issue has been the overall lack of awareness of New Jersey's academic assets by the business community. Too many New Jersey companies have partnered with universities in Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, or Boston for no other reason then they simply know that universities exist within these areas. In fact, New Jersey and its research universities have done a poor job highlighting many of the research facilities, equipment, and talented faculty they possess. Finally, New Jersey, its higher education system, and the private sector lack the coordination to secure increased R&D funding, especially when it comes to the federal government. It's often the case that New Jersey's universities are competing with one another. And while competition is healthy, some of these academic institutions are often missing out on additional funding opportunities. Private sector as well as federal grant funding can be selective, but it is oftentimes the coordinated efforts by universities that overcome individual competitors. Now, in response to these challenges, NJ Pro and Innovation NJ composed Building Bridges 2, breaking down barriers with 15 recommendations to address these challenges. Now, while I'm sure many of you would be interested in reading this report, which I can certainly share with you at the end of the webinar, I'm sure many of you are also thinking, oh great, another report. However, at Innovation NJ, it's been our mission to help implement these policies. And I will have you know that our coalition and New Jersey has been very active in refining our innovation ecosystem and our members have benefited greatly from our progress over the past five years.
The first member benefit we've developed has been a single point of contact for each of our research universities, allowing businesses to streamline and overcome at least some of the bureaucracy of our universities, our coalition can get in touch with our research university leadership with a single email or phone call, helping businesses determine which one of the five research universities New Jersey has to offer is best for them. The second benefit has been our weekly communications and daily posts of our academic, business, and government members. Innovation NJ has been the central portal for sharing updates of our members to improve the collaboration and improve the awareness of what's so great about the Garden State. New Jersey, uh, excuse me, third, we've successfully lobbied for two supports that would provide additional help to bolster our innovation ecosystem. The first one being the New Jersey Angel Investor Tax Credit, which was signed into law by the Christie administration in 2013 and provides a tax credit for up to 10% of an investment of a qualified angel investor. Additionally, the administration created the New Jersey Council on Innovation to encourage additional collaborations with the business community, as well as help implement the many recommendations made by NJ Pro and Innovation New Jersey. Our university members have also made great progress as they continue to help support the business community and in turn, New Jersey. Rutgers University has developed a public business portal and asset database that allows companies to search through all of the faculty researchers, licensed technology, capabilities, and facilities that Rutgers has to offer. Likewise, they provide links to professional development programs and recruiting opportunities for other forms of industry collaborations. Rowan University and the New Jersey Institute of Technology also recently launched their own tech parks where businesses are directly partnering and innovating with academia. The South Jersey Tech Park next to Rowan offers expertise and space in the industries of sustainability, biotechnology, infrastructure, and computation. While the Innovation Institute, a corporation of NJIT, offers support in areas of homeland security, manufacturing, health IT, and financial services. These are but a few examples of the progress our members have made, and we will be sharing more at our upcoming October 1st event. And so in the honor of, our, in the honor of this progress, and to celebrate our five-year anniversary, the Healthcare Institute of New Jersey and NJBIA will be hosting the Innovation Event of the Year. Hosted by coalition member AT&T um, in their Bedminster campus, which is right next to their Global Network Operations Center, Innovation New Jersey will be having a symposium to highlight New Jersey's progress towards an innovation ecosystem. Attendees of the half-day event will hear from all five of New Jersey's research universities as well as industry leaders who have partnered with these institutions. Representatives from all parts of our coalition will be in attendance and we will also have remarks from the Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadano and Anthony Belafuso, President of the University Industry Demonstration Partnership, to dis discuss the future of innovation in New Jersey. There will also be a networking breakfast and reception and registration can also be found on our homepage. I also want to stress that walk-ins are prohibited as NJ, excuse me, as AT&T is a secure facility and registration will be closed two days prior to the event on September 28th. So for today, I discuss the history of New Jersey as the innovation state, the development of the New Jersey innovation ecosystem, and how New Jersey is reclaiming the innovation title. 
I hope today's webinar was helpful and at Innovation New Jersey as well as NJBIA, we look forward to helping our members innovate as well as stay connected. Thank you for listening and I look forward to all of your questions. Thank you very much, Tyler. That was a great presentation, had a lot of really good information in it. Uh, let me remind everyone to please uh, type in your questions and send them in. Tyler will be taking questions now uh, from his presentation. Also, I see that we have put the Building Bridges 2 report up uh, on our handout section. If you do want to read that report, and if you're in the, oh, great, another report category, you can just ignore it. Uh, okay, so Tyler, let me let me start. Um, how would a business go about getting involved with, say, an NJIT or a Rutgers University? Sure. So, I, yeah, I, I think that's a very simplistic yet uh, important question. So, what we've done at Innovation New Jersey um, has developed a single points of contact. Um, so at NJIT, for example, um, you, you would definitely reach out to those individuals that are within their tech transfer part, uh, tech transfer center, or at the Innovation Institute, um, which directly partners with business. Um, ultimately, there are several points of contact employers can um, tap into. But what we've tried to do is try to make it uh, simple and have a single point of contact. Honestly, employers can reach out to particular faculty members if they have a relationship with those individuals. They can reach out with department heads if they also have relationship with, with those. Um, or reach out to the tech parks who are always interested um, in, in partnering uh, as it is their, their mission to do so. If you don't have a if you don't have a relationship with a faculty member or department, uh, where could you find those contacts? Sure. So uh, we have our single points of contact uh, posted on our Innovation New Jersey website, and the URL for that is uh, innovationnj.org. Uh, um, however, if you simply Google Innovation New Jersey, um, it should be one of the, the top hits. Um, otherwise, if, if you're a member of BIA or the coalition, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me, um, and I'd be happy to get you connected with our universities. Uh, okay, we have a question here from one of our participants. Uh, Princeton University was just named the top university in the United States for the third year in a row. However, they were not mentioned in your presentation. How will Princeton play in this pushback of it to innovation? So I, I apologize first off for, for not incorporating uh, Princeton in, in my presentation. And to be honest with you, Princeton has done an excellent job uh, innovating. Um, and when I say that, I mean partnering with, with businesses, partnering with the federal government. I'm sure many of you know that they are right next to the Princeton Plasma uh, Lab, which is actually a federal lab. Um, and so they do excellent work there. They have an excellent uh, engineering department and applied, uh, applied physics department. Um, and so not to not to shrug Princeton, um, and because you know, I would certainly have to highlight all of our members if I could, and unfortunately I can't. But what I do hope to do at our October 1st event is to certainly highlight Princeton, um, as well as have representatives from the Princeton community uh, be present to not only have them network with, with our business partners, but to speak about all of the successes they have done. Thank you. And um, getting back to the partnerships between uh, universities and businesses, what, what types of businesses would really benefit from these sorts of things? So, you know, primarily when we talk about Innovation NJ, we're, we're, we're centered around STEM. 
so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, and so if you're a small startup tech company or a large pharmaceutical company or something in between, you know, those, those businesses obviously can benefit greatly from, from any of our five research universities. But I also want to mention that um, all of our uh, community colleges, four-year institutions, um, whether it be a research university or just a state college, um, all have some form of another uh, an opportunity where businesses can partner. And primarily, this is centered around professional development um, or some form of business consulting. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, and that actually, education is a part of this in general. Just uh, how do you see that fitting in with this? Sure. So one of the first things that whether it's a research university or community college, their mission is to, is to educate students so they can become uh, the next generation of workers. And, you know, obviously, if you haven't heard the news, STEM is more important than ever before. And so we're constantly encouraging individuals um, to uh, you know, st study either engineering, some sort of science that can help them, um, you know, maximize their their employment potential. Um, I know going back to that that uh, recent uh, poll that had Princeton as the the number one undergraduate institution. Quite frankly, they're they're they top many charts, um, not just for having an overall undergraduate education, but they do extremely well um, in the education of engineering. And you can you can see, I, I believe the report came from Payscale. And an individual who graduated with some form of engineering degree from Princeton um, had some of the, the top uh, potential income that an individual can have. And quite frankly, any individual who uh, can receive some sort of STEM degree or engineering degree can certainly maximize their earning potential um, when compared to somebody like me who studied political science or some sort of uh, arts or literature. Okay. And uh, you, you mentioned earlier uh, about reclaiming the innovation title for New Jersey. And uh, I was just wondering, who is our competition? Who are we going head-to-head -head against? That's a, that's a really good question, Steve. Um, so the innovation title, um, you know, you can measure that any which way. You know, New Jersey has always touted its highly educated workforce, its robust industry investment in research and development, um, it's high quality of living, our, as well as our close proximity to a vast amount of the U.S. population. You know, us living next to New York City and Philadelphia and just, you know, a couple hour drive from Washington, D.C. makes a location like New Jersey a prime location um, to, to starting a business. Now. But, you know, there are companies, there are states out there that um, are really leveraging their academic assets. And I mentioned Boston, um, actually Massachusetts as a whole, but, you know, in locations like Boston have really leveraged their uh, institutions, you know, Harvard, MIT, um, as well as the, the Boston college system. Those colleges um, not only have started working together, but have directly worked with industry. Um, you know, I hear constantly that there are different uh, life science, primarily pharma companies that are have moved up to uh, to Boston and Massachusetts. And so Massachusetts has been able to leverage those assets. You know, in California, you know, we would obviously be competing against Silicon Valley and the the muscle that California wields when it comes to their UC system. Um, so, you know, when Steve, I, I think you asked a good question, who are our competitors? 
I would say it's Massachusetts, California, um, you know, arguably New York because they are a regional competitor. Um, and then of course Texas too, which has um, a lot of companies being attracted not just to their um, academic assets, but to also their low cost state. They are much easier um, in doing business than that we are here in New Jersey. Okay, I, I also want to go back to the NJ Pro report a little bit. There were two of them. The, there was the first NJ Pro report, which, as I understand it, got this whole Innovation New Jersey thing off the ground, and then the um, the second Building Bridges report was uh, more detailed and really where the rubber hits the road. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about those and uh, how you went about and what those recommendations mean for in innovation. Sure. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned both reports. Uh, so the first Building Bridges report that came out in 2010 um, actually created or birthed Innovation New Jersey. Um, you know, it was through the leadership of the Healthcare Institute of New Jersey and NJBIA, um, Haskell Berman, specifically from the Healthcare Institute, and, and Melanie Willoughby here at BIA. And that really got the conversation started. Um, and so we've identified some of the issues from that report. But then in Building Bridges 2, which was released in 2013, really took a deep dive. Um, and the the way we were able to write that report is that we literally had focus groups in eight industry areas. Um, and those included uh, the chemical industry, the aerospace and defense industry, telecommunications, um, the life sciences, as well as several others. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and we took, you know, uh, tidbits from both not just industry, but then also academia, and trying to figure out how these two organizations really hit some of the roadblocks. And in this presentation, you know, I, I, I tried to keep it high level, but in the report, it certainly gets down to the nitty gritty. And as I mentioned, there are 15 recommendations in this report. Now, some of these recommendations can be supported by our state government, while others, other recommendations really need to uh, come from the universities themselves. Things like an asset database within each of the universities. That's something that Rutgers has started. But this, their asset da database is actually extremely new. You know, just having Rutgers identify all of th the things that they do has been revolutionary. And what at Innovation New Jersey, what we hope to do is to create an asset database, not just for Rutgers, but for all of New Jersey, so that we can leverage all of the academic assets New Jersey has to offer. So that's just one example. Um, you know, another example, as I mentioned, was the Council on Innovation. Now, something like that, which was created by the Christie administration, excuse me, um, was through executive order. Um, but something like that certainly just continued the conversation because ultimately it's going to come down to businesses and academic institutions having the conversation amongst, them scale, it, amongst themselves and saying, you know, from business perspective, you know, we're looking to partner with you guys. We want to have some of our basic research done here in New Jersey. And academia needs to say, you know, we're certainly willing to support you. We have so many great things that we have to leverage, you know, whether it's our equipment, our faculty, and even our, our, our students. Um, and, you know, those assets uh, will eventually be aligned. And it's just a matter of continuing this conversation. And, uh, yeah, I, I also want to go back to the idea of an angel investor. Um, what, uh, for those who may not know, if you could explain what an angel investor is and just how you see angel investors, what role they would play in this process and why they're so important. Sure. So angel investors are investors 
um, that are willing to invest in very small startup companies that you know are really just trying to get off the ground. And what I mean by that is that they are still developing a product. You know, there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there that you know are looking for funding. Um, and there are a variety of ways that entrepreneurs can do that, but there's always a need for more funding. Something like this angel investor tax credit can help continue to incentivize investors um, to get and play more of a, a role in New Jersey's um, innovation ecosystem. I, I also want to mention that within our region, many of the other states um, offer some form of angel investor tax credit. And so for us, not only was this necessary because we believe in, in fostering our innovation ecosystem, but from a competitive standpoint, it was a no-brainer because everybody else was doing this. You, you mentioned the Healthcare Institute of New Jersey earlier. They've been a, a great partner in this project. Uh, how many uh, members does the Innovation NJ Coalition have now? Sure. So yes, the Healthcare Institute of New Jersey, um, like BIA, is a trade association and they represent um, the life science industry. But for Innovation New Jersey, we go beyond just the life sciences. Um, we go for the engineers, we go for high tech companies, whether it's in IT or financial services, um, as well as big pharma, small biotech, and things of that nature. And our coalition has grown. Uh, over the past um, year alone, we've, gr we've seen a influx of over 100 members. And we have about, um, I would say, uh, almost 700 uh, member contacts. And what I mean by that is, you know, with our newsletter, with our daily communications, we send out emails to all of these individuals. Several of them, of course, respond and continue to send us uh, additional information to, to share with all of our members as well. Okay, and just uh, one last question. Um, what does success look like for you? Where do you, would you like Innovation New Jersey to be at the 10-year anniversary? Wow, uh, so that is, is certainly a, a great question. So what I would say is that if New Jersey can once again become the innovation state, um, the place where high-tech companies that are well-established, small startup companies um, are sprouting up everywhere, are moving to New Jersey, um, and we're beating out uh, our regional partners like Pennsylvania and New York, um, as well as tra trouncing on uh, states like Massachusetts and California. If, if we can do that, I, th I think that would be certainly a, a success. Um, but, you know, it, that's, that's somewhat grandiose. And I, and I think that what we could do um, is, is ensure that we do have a asset database for the state that we can certainly leverage to attract our uh, member companies as well as potential uh, companies that are, are interested in moving in this area. You know, if we can do that and then have not only these companies sit down with, with state government and our associations, but then also sit down with each of the universities and say, hey, we're, we're interested in partnering with you. Um, you know, these universities have uh, no issue doing that and we continue to, to create um, a robust discussion and a robust um, innovation ecosystem. I, I think that would be um, the definition of success here in New Jersey. Okay, and we, we did get one last question in here from one of our attendees. Uh, it wants to know, 
uh, if there are any examples of innovation that have come about as a result of Innovation New Jersey's work, and beyond knowing that universities can help, what is some of the actionable things that listeners can do? Looks like somebody's ready to jump in. So yeah, um, I think what you know, I, I, I have mentioned a, a couple examples, but I do want to highlight uh, one from Rowan University. Um, they recently started a partnership with Lockheed Martin, um, and, it, and now this is a, a really impressive partnership. Not only has Rowan uh, agreed to assist Lockheed Martin in some of their uh, research and development, um, which, by the way, they do a lot in the aerospace technology realm. Um, and not only have they agreed with faculty to support their work, but they're also incorporating undergraduates as well as graduate students. Um, and what I mean by that is that undergraduates can receive internships as well as research opportunities at Lockheed Martin, and they are literally doing some of the work that Lockheed Martin employees would be doing. And what's even better is that it's not just a one-time internship. It's a, uh, a partnership that a student has, if they do well, um, they can continue um, to, to do an internship and research ship for their second year and third year. And this is a great example, not just because these students are doing practical research, but they're also building the resume. And specifically, when it comes to uh, organizations like Lockheed Martin, these students also graduate with federal clearance, which you know helps them immensely if they're trying to get um, you know a job in the federal government or with organizations that work with federal governments. And I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? He was looking for something um, actionable that attend listeners can do. Sure. Um, so what I would I would certainly tell everybody to come to our October first event, uh, which again can be found um, on our innovation website. Um, the other thing is to feel free to to reach out to me, and you know I'd be happy to talk to you more about how your organization can get get involved. Um, you know, it, it, being that I, I don't know what type of organization this individual who's asked the question, um, you know, I, I would say, you know, if you're a research university, um, you know, uh, please check out our, our NJ Pro report to, uh, you know, help adopt some of these recommendations that we've made for each of our research universities. If you're a business, that's great. Um, I would definitely say let's talk more offline about what you're interested in doing. Um, and again, you know, if if you're a STEM company, then visit our single points of contact when it comes to your research universities. Um, and if you're looking to receive support from uh, these schools, reach out to them. Um, and if you need help, feel free to reach out to me. You know, and again, if there are other ways you're looking for support, um, whether it's professional development or some sort of business consulting, you know, uh, you can certainly also reach out to your local community colleges and state colleges. Um, and again, I can help you do that as well. Okay, and if someone were to get in touch with you, how would they go about that? Sure. Um, sure. Um, so. What they can do is, again, visit our Innovation NJ uh, website, or they can contact me directly uh, via email. Um, my email is tseville at njbia.org. That's T for Tyler, and then seville, S-E-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, at njbia.org. Okay, we're going to wrap things up there. I want to thank Tyler Seville for an outstanding presentation and for his time today. Uh, don't forget, all of you will be re receiving a recording of today's webinar via email, and you will be getting the presentation via email as well. Lastly, we will be sending you a survey that we hope you will f fill out so we can understand how best to provide you important information in a webinar format. 
Our next webinar will take place Thursday, September 17th at 11 o'clock with the Partnership for a Drug-Free New Jersey providing information about how best to deal with substance abuse in workplace. I would like to thank our producer, Vinny Civitillo, 